I designed and built this customizable kids art frame using my desktop CNC machine. Not only does it display your kids artwork, but it also serves as a storage solution for all the projects that they've made in the past. If you're interested in seeing how I made this, stick around and I'll show you how I did it. Let's jump into it. What is going on guys? Welcome back to Aquavita Woodworks. And if you haven't been here before, my name is Justin and this is my garage wood shop. I like to design and build unique products like the picture frame that we're building today using my desktop CNC machine. In addition to building different projects, I also spend a ton of time at making detailed CNC build instructions so that those of you at home that have machines can make this project yourself. My plans not only include the corresponding SVG files, but you'll also get this downloadable PDF build manual that will go over everything step by step on every aspect of this project so that no matter what your skill level is, you'll be able to build it. I don't give the files away for free. They are linked down below in this video description for sale, but I think that the price point is fair since you only need to buy them once and you can make and sell as many of these picture frames as you want. If that sounds interesting to you, check the links down below and follow along with this video as I go through this project. Let's go build it. Chapter one, about this picture frame. Like most of my multi-component CNC projects, I designed everything for this picture frame within SketchUp. I knew I wanted it to fit standard size computer paper and display a single photo in the front while also storing extra artwork in the back. At first, I thought that I was going to end up using a hinge to hold the two parts together, but then I realized that magnets would be a bit easier. I added a magnet into each corner of the two main components and used screws to secure the storage rails as well as the front acrylic cover. I figured I'm going to be storing a lot more artwork than I plan on actually displaying, so I added an opening in the top for easy access. That way I don't have to remove the front cover every time I want to add a new piece of paper. I ended up using my new laser to cut out the small letters for the front, but you can also use a CNC machine and various different methods to customize this however you want. The frame is designed to screw into the wall and all of the components are made up from material that I purchased from my local big box store. The components of this project consist of the front cover, the back panel, the display guard, an acrylic cover, and two storage rails. The storage rails are the only components that are not carved on the CNC machine. The components that are made on the machine are carved using basic CNC toolpaths. If you pause your screen right now, you can read page 8 of the build manual, which explains what they are. In order to complete these toolpaths, you will need the following CNC bits. An eighth inch downcut bit, a quarter inch downcut bit, a spiral Oflu eighth inch acrylic bit, and if you want to customize the project, you can use a 90 degree V-bit. Now that you know a little bit about this project, let's move on to chapter two, hardware and materials. Because this project is made on the CNC machine, some of the components are carved to fit specifically sized hardware. These smaller components that you see on the front cover and on the back right here are held in place with screws, which I'll put the sizes of on the screen right now. You'll also notice that there's these two small felt pads, as well as four of them on the back. Those are totally optional, but I'll also put the link to those below in the description, as well as in the build plans. The most important thing that you will need, and that's designed specifically to fit this project, are these eight neodymium fridge magnets, which I found on Amazon. These are carved specifically to fit in pockets in each corner of both the rear panel and the front cover, and are what hold the two projects, or the two components rather, together. Once you gather all your hardware, we can start cutting our wood down to size, following the cut sheet on page 5 of the build manual, so we can eventually put them on the machine and start carving out our components. I think I mentioned it earlier in the video, but all of the wood that I used for this project was purchased from my local big box store, so none of you should have any issue finding it. The only thing that I did a little bit differently than from what you might do is instead of buying 8th inch stock, I just took the quarter inch stock that I already had and planed it down to size. Once you have everything cut though, this is what you should be left with. Chapter 3, Assigning Toolpaths Before I dive into what's probably the most important part of this video, assigning toolpaths, if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, please consider hitting the subscribe button in this lower corner. In addition to that, one thing I've noticed on my videos recently is that no one can seem to agree on what things are worth. 
I have my own opinions on what this picture frame could sell for at craft fairs, but leave a comment down below what you think it's worth because, well, I want to know. Let's go assign toolpaths. For the sake of saving time in this video, I'm only going to go over how to assign toolpaths for the front cover component. Just know that all the other components within this project are set up in the exact same fashion as this one, so as long as you understand how to do this one, you should understand the rest. Each component will have a cover page that looks exactly like this one. It'll give you the title of the component, the name of the associated SVG file, what CNC bits are used for that component, and where to clamp it when it's on the machine. At the bottom here, you'll also see a section which shows you what the final component should look like once you remove all the tabs and sand it. Behind the title page for each component, we'll get to the section which will show you exactly how to assign toolpaths for each vector file. On the left hand side, you'll see what number of toolpath you're working on, what vectors to select, highlighted in red, what toolpath you're assigning, what bit you're using, and at what depth to carve at. These toolpaths should be followed in the order here, and just note that some of them, like these two, will also specify at what start depth you should start carving at. That's not totally necessary, but it will save you a whole bunch of time within the carving process. You'll see that the front cover component also has more on the next page. In total, there's seven toolpaths for this component. I tried to make it extremely clear when you have to change tools and when you need to add tabs. To better understand this, let me show you how to apply this within my CAD program, which is Carbide Create. When you import the SVG file into your CAD program of choice, this is what you should see. Just make sure the outside perimeter edges, which is highlighted in blue within your build manual, lines up with the correct dimensions of your stock material. In this case, it's 13.75 inches by 11.25 inches. That way, if for some reason this image imports at the wrong scale, you can always mess around with it like I'm showing you here and get it back to its original dimensions. Once you know that everything is scaled correctly, we can look at the first toolpath within our build instructions and highlight the selected vectors that are shown in red. For some reason, my screen recording isn't showing everything that I was actually doing on the screen here, but I'm selecting the quarter inch down cut bit with a pocket toolpath at 0.187 inch depth. And if I show you the simulation of what that should look like, this is what you get. You're going to follow those exact same steps for every toolpath within the components. Here, I'm doing the same thing I did as the first one, just selecting the different vectors, and this time I'm also telling the bit to start at 0.187 inch depth. When I click on the simulation, this is what the first two toolpaths will look like combined. If I fast forward to when I've assigned all seven toolpaths according to the directions, this is what the final simulation of the front cover will look like. Hopefully that explanation was easy enough for you to understand and you can follow that same process for all of the components. Once you have all of your G-code assigned, we can move on to chapter four, machine time. I'm assuming that since you're watching this video, you have a machine at home and you're not really interested in watching it carved. Instead, here's a musical montage which will show the clamping procedures and the final results for each component. Enjoy. Chapter five, prep and assembly. Now that our components are carved and off the machine, we can start prepping them for final assembly. The first thing that we need to do is remove the tabs, and I found that the easiest way to do this is by using a multi-tool. Once removed, I do go over to the spindle sander and make sure that the tabs are completely flushed with the edges. You could use a flush trim bit on your router table, but I found that that's just too much setup for what's required. 
I do use my router table, however, with an eighth inch roundover bit on the front cover on this project. I make sure that all the edges are rounded over on both the inside and outside of the component and also the middle edges of the actual frame. After I'm satisfied with how the edges look, I get to sanding. Because I made this from pine, I'm sanding up to 220 grit sandpaper and just focusing on the edges to make sure they don't look too rough. Sanding as usual is super time consuming, I'm not going to show too much of it on the video, but just make sure that everything looks neat. I decided that I wanted to stain this project, but before I do that, I want to countersink some screw holes into some of the components just to make it a little bit easier once everything is stained. In order to do this, I did a dry assembly with the storage rails and the display guard and countersunk the holes once they were in place. Once that's finished, we can move on to staining. I'm using a red mahogany stain for this project, and since this is pine, I am going to use a pre-stained conditioner before applying it. I just made sure to glove up and use a paper towel after applying the stain to make sure that everything was nice and even. I let that dry for about a day, and then I got ready to apply my varnish, which is going to be spray lacquer. I like to use spray lacquer for most of my projects, if you've noticed by watching my channel, just because it dries so fast. One tip that I do have for you, however, is that you should sand lightly with 800 grit sandpaper and use a tack cloth in between coats. This will just make sure that everything is glassy smooth once it's finished. Once the varnish was dry, I got ready to assemble this project, starting out with the magnets. Making sure that the magnets polarity is lined up correctly, I used some epoxy weld to secure them into place. After that, I assembled the rest of the components and screwed them into place. Just note that the two top screws, where there isn't another wooden component, are the two quarter inch screws. If you make these half an inch long, they'll pop to the front, which will ruin your project. So take note of that. I already mentioned this earlier in the video, but I chose to customize this cover using my laser. I cut out these small letters on the front, spray painted them, and then glued them to the bottom front cover here. If you don't have a laser, which I know a lot of you don't, what you would do is before you stain or even after you stain and add the components, you would take this front cover component and place it on your CNC machine to customize it however you want. Within the build manual, I've included SVG files which show just the front cover of the component so you know where your borders are when you're carving it. You could choose to carve this in many different ways, but I figured the most common way would be using a 90 degree V-bit with some ore mask. It's really up to you and the possibilities are really endless for how you can customize this. But once you finish doing that, we can hang this on the wall and we're finished with this project. Chapter six, final thoughts. After finishing this project, I showed it to some friends and I already have about six orders for Christmas. If you like this channel, you probably know that I don't really like to build the same thing more than once, so we'll see when I get to those. This project took about two hours, two and a half hours total, I would say. Uh, it's kind of hard to gauge because I still film all these videos on my phone and setting that up is not very time efficient. But if you like what you saw and you stuck around this long, please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for what other projects you'd like to see me make in the future. Until next time, Keep building something.